tell you how good it feels to be back in the saddle, recording podcasts, guest episodes, and just hanging out here, spreading some sass on Dr. Me First. I'm your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Freaking Aaron Wiseman, and today I am talking to the amazing Dr. Cherry Chin. If you go back, she was one of my episodes. I think it was 32 is what I said in the podcast recording. Way, way back. We recorded in 2018. Her episode popped out early in 2019. So I am catching up with her today to see what she's doing, how her website has grown, the realestatephysician.com, and all in all, just checking in on another entrepreneurial friend. So join us in our conversation and hope that you get your kick of encouragement today. Here we go. friend. It is so good to have you back. Audience, listen to this. She was one of the first people that I podcasted with back in 2018 when I got this podcast started. She is Miss Episode 32, way, way back. Now we're in the 380s, Cherry. So, oh you my know. goodness. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's one of those. I was going through the list and I was like, who do I really, really want to talk to? And that's why we reached out and emailed you, Cherry, to catch up with. So for all the people oh in podcasting gosh. world who haven't listened to episode 32, tell them all about yourself. Thanks again for having me on air. And it is so great to uh, reconnect with you. My name is Cherry Chen. Uh, I'm a physician as well. Uh, my specialty is I'm internal medicine hospitalist from the Dallas area. I did all my schooling in Texas, but did my residency in Portland at Oregon Health and Science University. So I'm still practicing and sweat my seventh, seventh to eighth year out as a full-time attending now. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm in my timeline and outside of medicine, my, uh, my interest is real estate. And so I think that's how we connected, uh, you know, several years back. And it's just great to reconnect and, and catch up. I know. And so that's what I want to do. So back then, I remember we were both like fresh behind the ears trying this new yeah. like entrepreneurial thing. What has happened in the last four years? Yeah, no, I, you know, uh, still full time internal medicine, but I'm definitely thinking about cutting back. You know, real estate has allowed me to do that. But I think it just, you know, in the broader context of medicine, seeing our colleagues, and it's just a lot more people, right, are pursuing things outside of medicine, which I think is really great, because I've always seen myself as more than just a physician, right? You're 100% air, and I'm 100% cherry, we have other things besides medicine, you know, that are that, you know, tug at us, right? But really just out seeing other colleagues gives themselves that space and permission to explore. And seeing, you know, all these, you know, businesses or side gigs come out, um, I think it's really helpful. Um, just overall in that way. Yeah, that we can be multifaceted. Friend, yes. I have been so impressed. I was perusing your website, therealestatephysician.com. Listen to all of this that Terry is doing, guys. I have to brag on her. So internal medicine, like she said, with experience in commercial real estate, and that is across multifamily homes, self-storage, manufactured home parks, on and on and on, she provides a resource with a vision to empower a community of physician investors to achieve greater financial independence. And, you know, I think there's nothing more special than providing someone a place to live where they can call home. Oh, yeah. And I feel like, you know, what makes real estate interesting is we can all kind of intuitively understand the value of that, right? Uh, outside of an investment, we've through med school, through fellowship, you've probably lived in an apartment at some point or, you know, grew up in one or now own or rent your house. So I think intuitively, everybody knows the value of it. And on an investment, there's just, you know, so many tidbits that, you know, we can uh, foreseeably cover in one podcast episode. But I started looking into it about, you know, six years ago as a, okay, well, what's, what else besides a 401k can I possibly invest in, right? Like medicine is so straightforward, but we don't get any other education. And that's kind of when I started my own education and the real estate physician was kind of born organically a couple of years later in 2018 to help others like myself understand, okay, what else? besides going to own my own uh, rental or Airbnb. And that's kind of how I got started in the 
commercial real estate space, which uh, for most of it's just think of it as uh, investing into an apartment complex, for example. So it's really been fun to build that. And most fun is you're just connecting with other people like yourselves, right? And, and being able to understand uh, what struggles, what obstacles, what goals that we might all have in common because we come from a similar place, understanding that everybody has different you know, financial situations and goals still. I know. That's one place for me as we are knocking out my student loan debt and hopefully we'll be done with it soon. We won't have a mortgage anymore soon. You know, looking towards that legacy piece and it's like, okay, now that like my individual family is taken care of, how do I impact my community? And I know one of my like long-term goals before they put me in the ground is I really want to offer sustainable housing for families in our rural area because right now, like there there just isn't a lot. And I specifically now work with a lot of families through addiction and substance use. And so having sober living is even more challenging in the rural area. And I just am so glad to have you as a resource to go to that. What other stories have you heard from physicians with these kind of like bigger than, oh, I want to own an apartment complex? Have you seen with, with other docs doing when it comes to real estate? I think you get the whole spectrum, you know, uh, yes, our, our, you know, our people are doctors, right? But we're still just people. So it's no different than the general public where you have people who, you know, uh, want to fix and flip real estate, right? Or who want to do just vacation rentals, who really like, you know, rehabbing or being a part of the process to where I'm kind of on the other side of the spectrum and with real estate syndications, I want to be as passive as possible. And I think that goes along with really understanding my values, what I want to prioritize. And, I, and that's one of my favorite conversations to have with not just investors, but physicians is to think about the opportunity cost of what you're saying yes or saying no to. And that includes not just your your money, right? Like if you're going to invest 25000 or 50000 but think of it in a much broader context. Of what is the opportunity cost of your time, of your energy or sanity? And then uh, that can help you, you know, uh, strategize uh, what what could be the best, you know, avenue for you. Because within real estate, there are so many ways you can uh, get involved. For example, so that's one of my favorite conversations to have with people, so that you can get a more holistic view rather than telling somebody, "Oh, you should invest in real estate or you should invest in this project because it is so, uh, you know, independent on what the person's goals are." Yeah, we recently did some home. We recently moved to the farmhouse on Wiseman Farms. And I reminded myself again how much I hate painting. I hate (laughs) painting. (laughs) So, me personally, I feel like anything flipping a house, there's, I would never, never paint. Now, I did enjoy. I had to put trim down in the kids' room. And I really love like the geometry and the measuring. And I told my husband, I was like, I think I might have like missed my calling on this, like (laughs) using power tools, but painting, F no, I am not. (laughs) <laughs> that is not yeah. my calling. And sometimes you don't know until you do it, right? And and also it's you have to separate between your personal home or your vacation that place rental that you like to be at versus pure investment, right? Yes. And so I think initially it's hard for us to, you know, compartmentalize that because you get into the real estate and you say, Would I live here? And you want to do these upgrades, but to kind of uh, you know, separate that into, well, what is my strategy? What is my goal? What is my business plan? If it's an investment versus, you know, personal use, for example. I think that's a really great point because we want to like beautify and make things nice. And I've seen a lot of people when they go into their first investment home, have a hard time separating that, like putting in maybe like cheaper appliances or countertops. Because like you said, you really need to think about it as the investment, not evidently, this is mine that I will forever and ever live in. Right, right. And that's that's what I think is tricky about real estate. Because even now I'm so tempted to look at Airbnb rentals and wanting to make it all beautiful or or something like that. But it's uh, that's what I think is, uh, uh, you know, just, again, being honest with yourself, uh, your strengths, your weaknesses, and and, you know, but the strategy, uh, having all of those conversations beforehand, before you jump into a- an investment, for example. Yeah, it's like figuring out that line of like, what's good enough? What's good enough in this investment property, not like HGTV 
<laughs> yeah, they're so fun to watch. And it really is like, you know, not only your strategy, but your timeline, right? Is this something you want in three years and five years, or you have 20 years, right? And so all of that affects, you know, what kind of assets you should be looking into or what kind of cities. So I think it's just all of these much broader conversations that you can have with yourself that you don't, you know, need to, uh, a course to, to tell you these things, right? Or sometimes we get drawn in by the real estate and, and learning terminology that we forget, okay, it still comes down to like my investment philosophy, my risks. And so I think those are just the really important conversations we sometimes may miss. Have you gotten to multi-state investment yet? outside of your own home state? Yeah, yeah. So so a lot of, I would say the bread and butter of what I personally like investing in through the company is just, you know, stabilized multifamily properties, right? So not the same as uh, what you were saying um, with a certain population, but these are typically properties, you know, that are already built, or people already live in them. They're not the most expensive and they're not the most, you know, rundown or distressed properties. So everyday workforce housing, for example, right? And so no matter if the economy is really great or uh, we're in a recession, there's always going to be a demand for people who can't purchase homes, especially now with the interest rates rising. So there's always value for these, these kinds of properties. You're providing safe housing with amenities, uh, improving on these properties, and there's always going to be some kind of demand for them, right? So we like very healthy cities that have a lot of you know, job growth or economic diversity. So yeah, I'm from Texas. We have a lot of properties in Dallas, uh, Austin, Houston, because there's so many jobs and people moving. But we also have projects, you know, uh, North and South Carolina and in Atlanta, Georgia, Orlando, Florida, these uh, cities where we see a lot of people moving to because it's lower cost of living, they have better job prospects. And so all of those are things that can help, you know, your investment, for example. I know one of your big core values is empowerment. Talk a little bit about how that plays out in the real estate physician. Yeah, I think all, you know, uh, physicians can understand the sentiment of, you know, practicing medicine on your own terms, right? Um, whether that's you actually, you know, you really love medicine, you want to stay full time forever, you want to come back. So empowerment is a way for you to give you that opportunity, right? That space to make that decision. And the avenue I've chosen for myself and why I can connect with, you know, our investors is to have that opportunity and that choice through making what I think are healthy investment choices, right? And so that's the avenue I've chosen, um, what speaks most to me and having a really great understanding of commercial real estate, for example. So when you have these investments, well, then I can have some cash flow. I can have appreciation. And for example, if I double my money every three to five years, right? That's not something I can do with, with medicine. And so no matter what investment you're looking into is to realize at some point you're trying to disconnect your time from the income or money you take home, right? And so that can apply to stocks, to, to bonds, to other avenues of investing. Real estate uh, and commercial real estate is one I found that makes the most sense to me. And so what that allows all of our investors to do is, okay, rather than wait 40 years for my 401k, maybe in 15 years, I can achieve those goals through real estate, right? Uh, it does not come without, you know, risk or really understanding what you're looking into. So you're not investing in things you don't understand. But that's kind of the avenue I've taken um, for myself and in connecting with physicians, you know, who might be on the same wavelength. Yeah, to help them out along the way. I know we probably have some listeners right now who are like, this is all well and great, but I am still, you know, still carrying student loan debt. Maybe they have young children. Maybe they have aging parents that they're taking care of. And so there can sometimes be a lot of fear in looking at something new and not knowing much about it. What would you encourage and empower those listeners in if they are got that curiosity spark about real estate? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say there's a bunch of resources that are free and to just get educated, right? Because that can only empower yourself, right? The more you know about something, maybe it is risky. Maybe it's actually less risky than you thought because you got educated on the topic. I would say, you know, uh, to talk to somebody who's in, you know, a similar place you've been and they overcame that 
or somebody who's achieved the goals that you want to achieve, right? And that's why I, um, you know, every anybody who signs up on our platform, I'm talking to them and we have an introductory call because it is so different for everybody. It's not to convince you syndications are the best investment. Everyone should do them. It's to really look at, does it make sense for you? It not make, make sense for you for the next three years as you're paying down more student loans. But if you know about them, educate yourself, then, you know, in three years or five years, you would have, you know, built a cushion or feel very comfortable going in, right? So there's never, I feel like for opportunity costs, like the opportunity cost of education only hurts you if you don't take the time to educate yourself, right? And then when you're ready, uh, then you won't be, you know, uh, you know, there's shiny object syndrome for a lot of investors, like invest in this, invest in that and get carried away and have a really, uh, you know, strong strategy if you're educated. So I would say, it definitely is independent uh, of every person's, you know, priorities and needs. And that's why it's important to talk to somebody who you might feel connects with you, has been there or is where you want to be. What's the level of entry for somebody who's coming in new to investment, but wants to start dabbling? That really depends, right? If you're talking about, for example, real estate syndications, which is what I do, the typical minimum is twenty five or fifty thousand dollars, right? Which is a, which is a lot of money. There are, for example, crowdfunding platforms uh, that maybe people have heard of, like Equity Multiple or Crowd Street or something like that, where you can get in for a much lower minimum, like five hundred dollars or thousand dollars, right? So to kind of dip your feet, those platforms have made it uh, accessible for more everyday investors. But then the onus falls on you as an investor to really understand what you're investing into, because those are platforms that just kind of share the deals. They're not running the deals. They're not investing into the deals. And so there might be fees and risks that you might not know about. But the reward is you can jump in uh, into real estate at a much lower minimum, right? So to understand, okay, well, what do these platforms offer and what I need to be aware of? Versus going the private syndication route, which is is what I do, or investing in REITs in the stock market, right? All those have different risks involved with them. What's something that you know now that you wish you knew back in 2018 when this all started with us? Oh my gosh. I, I would still go back to opportunity costs because I think you know, uh, as physicians, we are, we are much more privileged, right? With a higher salary, right? So, so again, uh, it goes back to, I would say being really honest with myself, how much time do I have? You know, how much money do I have, which is important for investing, of course. And what are my true strengths and weaknesses? As much as I want to do an Airbnb, I suck at anything to do with active real estate, or I would never want to, you know, be called on a tenant issue, right? Like being really honest with yourself, because I think at the end of the day, all of us agree our time and our energy or, or sanity is much important than that extra dollar you're going to get, right? And so that's kind of something I remind myself every day still now, because I think the more you get into it, your job or your investments, you do realize that is, you know, the most valuable, you know, currency you have is your time and how, how you spend it. Absolutely. I think that's a great thing to remember because we can spend our time on so many things that just being super selfish and selective about it is absolutely a hundred percent. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I think that when we give ourselves that, you know, space to really think about it, cause you know, we, we have, you know, we don't have that much brain capacity at the end of the day to, to really ask ourselves these hard questions at the end of clinic or hospital day. And so I think that's that's what's important that sometimes we might not get when we're you know looking at a real estate course or looking at investment, right? And so that's why I think it's important to connect with somebody. And I think most things out there are, are free and available if you connect with the right people to help walk you through that. I know. And you're not going to self-promote yourself, but I am. So if this is an interest of yours, <laughs> please go see Cherry at her website, the realestatephysician.com. We'll put everything in the show notes with it because it really, it is a great resource page where you can find out a lot of information. And like you said, you can connect directly with her because I think, you know, that's the one thing I've learned through entrepreneurship is I don't have to know everything. I just need to know who to go to, to know things. And being super selective as far as, you know, that trusted team of advisors, I think is what can make or break you. 
Oh, exactly. And you're not going to know, right? You you can't just start out and say, okay, I've got my panel of five, right? You have to trial and error, even really quote successful people, right? They just might not jive with you or your personality, right? And so to it's like I said, education, there's no opportunity cost for you in that way besides your time, which is yes, and very important still. But even if you talk to people you don't agree with, you learn something, I think. So I would encourage as many of those conversations as part of your education, you know, I think is, is invaluable. Well, Dr. Cherry Chin, I hope that we can do this again in three to four years and see you as the real estate mogul (laughs) that you are. And I just want anybody out there who's listening that if this has been one of those things that piques your interest, but there's a lot of fear about it, that you can lean into that fear and know that you can work through it. And that fear is not evidently a bad thing. It's just trying to protect us and protect the hard earned money that we work towards. But you can also make that money work for you as well in some really smart and fun ways. Yeah, there's there's so many ways and real estate is just one of them. And so if, if that speaks to you, I can tell you all about commercial real estate and answer your questions on, on a call. And you know, there's and hopefully you have just a better idea. Like you said, it's you can take the next baby step forward, whether that's a yes or no, but at least you can have some progress. Yeah. I've heard it takes a village to raise a child. But you know what else? After raising that child and once that kid has grown up, it takes a community to care for them. Communities are what keeps us sane. They help us heal our trauma. They dance with us when we're winning. Without my online communities, I would have never made it through burnout. And I certainly would have gotten through the shitstorm of this pandemic either. If you too need community, I want to invite you over to my badass Slack group. That's right, I'm not going to be on Facebook, but I do love me some Slack. It's a place where you'll find that you're not the only one. You're not alone. You'll get total validation on what's going on with you. There's a pool of resources. Community is active and rating to welcome you in. We are all helpers who have needs. And sometimes we need to have a community that can surround us, protect us, give us a hug, and lift us up. And that's what the badass Slack community is. So come join me today. Link is in the show notes. I'm hoping that this interview majorly inspired you to get empowered by something to invest in something. It doesn't have to be a building. It doesn't have to be multiple figures, but just find that thing that lights your heart on fire, that gives you some balance and gives you some return on investment in your life. That could be like Dr. Chen, where she loves what she's doing with commercial real estate and it's empowering her. Maybe it's something like me and having a entrepreneurial business that balances me out. Maybe it's some kind of craft or hobby or activity. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you today to just grab onto it just for the fun of it, just for the hell of it. Because you know what? You were not put on this earth just to pay bills and die. Let's go on living and have experiences and have the fullest life possible. Not just get up, go to work, come home, do the dishes, make dinner, go to sleep, rinse, repeat, and keep going every single day. Remember, fun is a part of wellness in your life. And if you don't have it, friend, it's time to get an IV push of it. If you're having trouble identifying that, why don't you come hang out with me in the Slack group? Super important. We talk about it quite a bit. If you get hung up or stuck, there's about 175 of us in there who are more than happy to give you a little love tap and some sass and get you going on your way. So show notes have the link. Come hang out with me. And remember, your life, your calling, your pulse matters. See ya.
Turn up the door. 